All right. Okay, I see folks coming in. I'm excited to see everyone just logging in, jumping into our attendee box there. So fantastic. Thank you, thank you. You have made it. You have made it to this amazing Tuesday where you get a chance to hear from our special guests. So I'm very excited. Um, excellent. So I see more folks trickling in. So we're going to give it a little bit of time. So another minute or so before we kick start. But um, you are in the right place. If you signed up and registered um, for this particular webinar session that we've got in store for you. So excellent. Excellent. So for those that just logged in, um, you know, I was just commenting to the team. Uh, my favorite part, honestly, is to know where everyone's logging in from. Um, so if you want to take a quick second uh, on the chat, if you don't mind, um, just putting out a shout out. Where are you, where are you logging in from or where are you from? <laughs> um, so I know you're all joining us, uh, especially on this beautiful summer day uh, during your summertime. So we're excited again and delighted to have uh, you all join us. Um, so fantastic. So there's a shout out already. Uh, New Hampshire. Oh, wow. New Hampshire. Uh, how's the weather out there? Um, maybe if you don't want, if you don't mind sharing, what is it like right now? Is it hot, humid? Is it raining? <laughs> Let's see here. Excellent. Excellent. It's beautiful. Oh, I love it. 80 plus. Okay, there you go. That's the sweet spot, it sounds like. <laughs> and on the porch too. Oh my goodness. So you're just catching the breeze. You're outside. You're enjoying catching the wind there. Excellent. So again, I know there's a couple of folks still trickling in. So we're going to give, you know, a couple more seconds here before we kick start. Um, but again, uh, for those that just joined us, feel free. Tell us where you're logging in from and uh, where are you from if you'd like to share uh, to give a shout out so excited to um, you know be in this webinar with you all we're gonna definitely have moments of engagement oh i love it mexico okay fantastic i love it and i think you and you even spell it with the at the any there with the little correction wow that's very formal i love it <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know, you know, vacationing in Mexico around this time sounds amazing. <laughs> Hopefully you have a drink in your hand and enjoying today. So excellent, excellent. I love it. Thank you, Bernice. Thank you, uh, Mad Shoutouts. All right, fantastic. So I guess a couple more seconds just to make sure we capture folks. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, um, you know, just want to give a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Um, so first things first, uh, this is a Zoom webinar. And so at the very bottom, there is a doc there, uh, which you're going to get familiar with, essentially. So this is, again, uh, all for you. This is a webinar that is supposed to be interactive, engaging. Uh, so we, we thrive with your questions. Uh, again, this is how we're able to make any of this possible. Um, and so we have an amazing team that supports this. And so we really gravitate towards what it is that you're looking for. And so that's where we essentially move in that direction. Now, first thing is on the bottom, you're going to see a Q&A um, icon. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A, uh, not in the chat. I recommend the Q&A. And the reason for it is that we can store all your questions, answer them in the order it's been given. And ultimately we keep that so that way we can start generating our FAQs, right? So we wanna be able to help out on a more efficient manner. Uh, the other one is the chat, right? So keep all comments, um, you know, shout outs, things that we're doing right now uh, into the chat section. Um, and then essentially uh, we're gonna get through all questions as much as possible. That is our goal every webinar. And if we don't, um, I'll put, essentially contact information um, afterwards. So um, again, excited to be with you all on this Tuesday. Thank you for logging in wherever you may be logging into. And so um, I'm going to start with an introduction so that we can begin. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, without further ado, you've all made it to our special webinar 
Uh, this is a lot to learn about our software. And so my view board is something that we use here in our organization, ViewSonic. And so this is how we essentially uh, treat this software to help everybody deepen their understanding. So I get so many questions of, hey, this powerful tool, you're able to do what with technology? You're able to do what with lesson plans? And so we, really, we want to give something to all of our educator friends, especially our teachers that are in the classrooms teaching our kids um, essentially how to interact with them in a more engaging manner and digitizing your whole experience. And so we couldn't think of a better person <laughs> than this special guest that we have, which is Bridget Spackman, who's going to introduce herself. But before she does any of that, please on the chat, put your emoticons together and give a round of applause <laughs> to our amazing speaker and presenter, Bridget Spackman. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ruben, for that very warm welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Leveraging Language with My View Board. I am going to be sharing some really great, simple strategies that you can utilize with My View Board in order to encourage language skills with your students. So the first thing I like to do is uh, just give a little warm up, just like we would do with our kids. So I want you to think about these questions. You can answer them in the chat if you're comfortable while answering those inside of the chat, or you could just kind of keep them inside of your brain just to let it marinate for a little bit. So here's the first question. What does that word leverage mean? What does the word leverage mean? Here's another question I want you thinking about. What part of speech is the word leverage? Oh, my ELA teacher is out there, hopefully. I am touching all the, the feels here. What content area would this word fit best in your instruction? So what content area, is it math, language arts, science, social studies? Which one is it gonna fit best inside of your instruction? And then is language only an ELA topic? Is it only a topic for ELA teachers? So I see some comment, Mary Beth is saying, um, it's the great, it's using something to its greatest advantage. It's a verb and any content. Absolutely, I completely agree with you, Mary Beth. That is fantastic. So here's the thing, no matter what you teach, whether it's math, if you're teaching science or social studies this year, no matter what grade level you're teaching, language is gonna be a huge part of your curriculum. And so a lot of what we're gonna talk about here is really going to give you some ideas for how you can leverage language, no matter what you're teaching and to what grade level you're teaching to your kids. So before that, I really quickly just wanna introduce myself. So my name is Bridget Spackman. I have been an educator for 12 years now. Um, I've taught kindergarten first, uh, I've taught kindergarten fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. I've just recently published a book that's called Building Your Literacy Block, which really focuses on just establishing the literacy block and creating an authentic and rigorous learning environment for your students. Um, I told you that I have been teaching for 12 years and now I'm moving into more of a professional role where I am a training and consulting staff developer for a local IU within the state of Pennsylvania. So I'm located in the central Pennsylvania area. Uh, I have two boys. So this is my first boy. He is 16 years old. He's just started driving and it is exactly everything that you would think it would be having a 16 year old driver, but he is just my pride and joy. And that's my mom there in that image, just in case you wanted to know. I also have a little Tasmanian. He is nine years old. This is Blaine. Blaine and Ian are just the guys that just keep me so busy throughout the day and the school year, of course. And for just kind of the things that I like to do, getting to know me a little bit personally, I love to spend time on the river. So we have a local river that's near us. I like to go kayak voting and just spending time with family. Okay, that's enough of me. Let's talk a little bit about, again, those housekeeping pieces, just so that you have an idea of what this is going to look like. So as Ruben mentioned earlier, we do have a Q&A section on the bottom bar of Zoom. So you can put on any, any of your questions that you have in that Q&A spot. We do have some wonderful people here from USONIC who are gonna support us in answering some of those questions. And of course, I'm gonna chime in when and where it is possible. And then any comments, whether you're just wanting to throw some hype, some ideas, whatever it is, place those inside of the comment box in that chat section so that everybody can share some of those ideas together. 
I am going to ask that as you go through this, silence those phones. If you're able to just kind of get away from any of those distractions, do that now because you want to really get the most out of this webinar. I want to make sure that I'm delivering the best content possible. And in order for you to be able to retain that information, you need to get away from those distraction distractions. So put it on airplane mode. If you're able to do that, get rid of some of those distractions just so that you can give all of your time to us here. It's only one hour that I'm going to take of it. And I promise it's going to absolutely be worth it. And then towards the very end, if you stay with me, I just want to say that we have some wonderful just incentives for you. So if you're somebody that can stay to the very, very end, I'm going to put you on a wheel of winners and we're going to see who can win a $100 Amazon gift card. And then we also have another $25 Amazon gift card that is going to come at the very end. Chris is hyped, excited about that. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so let's get started with what is language. What is language? Well, language is going to be the method for us to communicate. It's going to be contrived of words, how we structure them, and it's the way that we speak and write and gesture to one another. So when we're thinking about language and why we should really focus on this language instruction, there's multiple different areas that's going to help us help our students through this learning process. And the way that we do this is through four key areas. One is going to be communication. You're going to have verbal communication. You're also going to improve their written communication. You're going to improve collaboration with their peers and with yourself. You're going to increase their vocabulary knowledge so that they're able to utilize a variation of vocabulary terms throughout whatever content material that you're working with. And then it's also going to help to deepen their understanding just comprehension wise. So all of these four areas are really going to help guide us and ensuring that we're supporting our students in all areas possible. So when we think about language, we also need to consider what are those key components of our language instruction. When you have a very clear understanding of what language is and you're able to pinpoint each of those various components, you're going to feel more confident and secure in providing that instruction to your students. So I'm going to give you a very basic overview of those components for language instruction. And the first one is going to be phonology. So phonology are going to be the rules that govern speech. In the English language, there are 44 phonemes. Anybody else always get confused with all of the P terms that are out there when it comes to language instructions. So a phoneme is going to be an individual sound within that English language, and there are 44 phonemes. However, within that English language, there are uh, over 120 combinations for how to develop those 44 sounds, okay? So that's phonology. It's just that understanding of those individual sounds within the English language. The next one is going to be morphology. And morphology is really going to look at the connotation. It's going to look at the study of words and how we combine our affixes and our base words to help develop meaning. And so this is going to pull together those prefixes, suffixes, roots, all the things in between and allow us to be able to manipulate them to create a lot of variation in the types of words that we're going to be teaching our kids. Syntax is going to be the third component of language instruction, and syntax is going to be the order in which we place words. So this is going to follow a subject verb object um, pattern in the English language, and it can vary and change depending on how many adjectives you're using, how many nouns you're using. And so we have to learn the order in which we are helping to teach students how to place those those words in that specific order. Then we have semantics. Semantics is going to be expanding vocabulary. That's the way that I like to think about semantics. It's learning about the synonyms, antonyms, words with multiple meanings, figurative language. It's really having this deeper understanding around language in general and why we're using certain words in specific contexts. And then the final component that we're going to look at 
is going to be pragmatics. And pragmatics is going to be the language that you use in a social situation. And we all know that that texting language that we will hear or that language that you hear with your best friend is very, very different than the language that you're going to use in a job interview. And so teaching kids the variations and what that looks like and how what that sounds like is really critical to help them be successful as they start to go out into the real world. So how do we manage to hit all of these various components of language in our instruction and also keep them engaged in learning? Well, one of the key ways that I've been able to do that is with my Viewboard's whiteboard. And this is something that I was able to incorporate into my own classroom. And I saw that my students were able to create various learning opportunities. They were learning from one another. They were engaging with their peers. They were exploring the content that I was providing for them. And more importantly than anything is that they were collaborating with one another. And so my Viewboard is really going to allow you to have interactive screens screens and create a learning environment that's going to be exciting and engaging for your students. And so one of the things that I will highly recommend to you is to join the community for my view board. And uh, within this community, you're going to have opportunities to learn from other educators that are using the software to engage with the, your students a little bit more and to find ways to take these very simple pieces and put them back into the classroom. And that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, of being a teacher, right, is that oftentimes they will give us technology and they'll say, hey, I want you to go put this technology into your classroom. But then the connection of, okay, but what am I supposed to do with it is very, very challenging. And so the hope through this webinar is that I'm going to show you how to take these very simple and strategic pieces and put them into my viewpoint board whiteboard and see how easy it is to make this happen in your own classroom. It's not going to take up a bunch of time. It's not going to feel overwhelming to you. And it's going to feel as though your students are excited and learning. And if my students were excited to learn with all of the strategies that I'm going to teach you guys, I know for a fact that your students are going to be excited to use a lot of these uh, various activities that we're going to be sharing with you. So let me share with you the activities that I'm going to uh, be presenting to you today. And all of these are going to hit a various part of our language components. And some of them will actually hit multiple components within that language instruction and that comprehension piece. So the first one is going to be shades of meaning. The second activity that I'll present to you is paragraph punctuation. The third one is picture of the day. And number four is word matrices or word matrix. And the fifth one is going to be sentence syntax. Now, before we jump into our very first one, I say we take a little break. We're going to take like a 10 second break, guys. We're going to add in a poll for you. And we want to know what grade level you're teaching right now. So we're going to get that poll going in. What grade are you teaching? Okay, two, three, five, six, eight. Okay, so um, as we go through, I guarantee you that whether you're a K-2 teacher, a 9-12 teacher, higher ed, whatever it might be, these strategies are going to work for your kids. The wonderful thing about this is that you can vary them based off of the needs of your students and where they are in their academic readiness. So the first one that I mentioned to you is shades of meaning. Now I'm going to show you a little clip of my son as I walk you through what shades of meaning is. So shades of meaning is an activity where you're looking at vocabulary terms and you're wanting to look at a variety of terms. I would say about five to six words that have very similar shades of meaning um, to one another. So in this case, we're using hot, boiling, searing, blistering. All of these words are very similar. Now, the key piece here is that you want to develop an environment where you're having a conversation with your students about what has the least action or emotion to what has the highest 
action or emotion. And so students now have to look at the words and they have to have a conversation about how they would order them. And so this is going to cause them one, to develop a higher vocabulary, Two, it's going to help them look at what their understandings are of meaning. And then three, again, it's going to build that collaborative piece, right? You're going to have them working in teams, working with partners to find a pair of um, a progression that they're all happy with. And then you're going to pull your class together to have a discussion about which group do you feel is correct. And you're going to find that a lot of the times, you know, there is going to be um, a little gray area. There's not necessarily a right or wrong. And that's the really cool part about this activity in general. So let's talk about those benefits. So I told you that it increases that vocabulary. It's going to help develop them, develop a deeper understanding of just meaning in general. You're going to build collaboration, which is very critical, especially with those 21st century skills that we have to develop with our students. And it's going to give them an opportunity to learn how to agree and disagree and give, in, give reasonings behind their thinking, which is very critical, especially as we start to move in some of the higher levels of literacy instruction. So let's talk about how to create this first. So when you open up the My View Board whiteboard, the first step that I would tell you is to set a background. Now for this background, all I did was put a really very simple gray. I don't know why the gray just calms me a little bit more. You're going to find that in the lower left-hand corner, there's a little background icon and you can select from a variety of colors. So if you are, you know, bright and wild and that's kind of your feels, go for it. Do whatever feels right for you there. The next part is to create your word list. And so for the word list, I used the shape tool, which is at the bottom of your main toolbar. And then you can select this shape and you can change the outline and you can change the fill color to whatever color you want it to be. You can change all the colors. So if you want every single word to be a different color, you can definitely do that. For the purposes of this activity, I kept them all the exact same. So one bar, just create one rectangle, and then we're going to go to the next part, which is going to be to copy and paste it. So now what you're going to do is add a text. And so you can use the text uh, feature at the main toolbar on the bottom of my Viewboard whiteboard. You're going to add your word, change the font color, change the sizing, and then you're going to group them. And so using the selection tool, you're just going to draw around that text and that uh, rectangle. And then your pop-up window is going to come up and you can hit the group icon, which, ha which has like a circle and a rectangle all at the same time or a square at the same time. So click that button and it's going to group it. Then you have the ability to copy and paste it. So once you do it once, copy and paste it. It's very, very simple. From there, you have all the same words. So you need to identify what are going to be those words that you will want to change. So to do this, you can use a thesaurus. You can go onto online and just look up shades of meaning and a huge amount of different um, options are going to come up for you. So I've done this with uh, feelings. I've done this with uh, emotions that you, or I guess feelings. And then I've done this with um, adjectives. I've done this with um, dialogue tags and having a variation of dialogue tags. So there are so many different possibilities and you can have one that you do every single week. So when I was implementing this into my classroom, I did this every single week with my students because I needed to increase that vocabulary um, opportunities for my students. So once you change this um, and you've adjusted all of your different words and you're going to have to ungroup it in order to do that, hit the text, change your text, and then group it back again. And you can place that back down on your bottom of your screen. So now that you have your words, here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to use the drag to copy feature. Now this is a really, really cool feature because what drag to copy does for you is it will allow you to take 
any form of um, text or boxes. And it will, once you click on it, it will just make a copy for you and you can place it anywhere on your canvas. So the reason I like to do this with this specific activity is that once you start to have your group share out, where they believe the sequence of these words should go, if you start to have variation, you can create an entirely new column to show that there is one group that thinks it's one way, there is another group that thinks it's another way, and allow your students to compare and contrast and look at the differences between them. I even encourage you that have your group members come up and place it where they believe it should go. Um, that way, they can all kind of see the differences between those groups and have a conversation about that. So I adjusted mine just a little bit. You can see here, I used the hand tool to reduce the size of my canvas um, because it is an infinite canvas. It goes as big as you want or as small as you want. You can change that sizing very, very easily. And again, you can see here on the drag to copy feature, I can just drag copy and then delete it when I'm done with it. The next one is to create your arrows. Now, um, the arrows are really just to help define where is the least action and emotion to where is the highest action and emotion. And I like to put this on here for my students just as a visual. So using the uh, shape tool, which is in your main toolbar, there's also lines as an option. So there's going to be a shape, there's going to be lines, and there's going to be tables. So I hit the line feature, chose the line that has an arrow on the top or on both ends. And then just using my finger, I was able to draw a line very easily. I added some text for the most action and emotion to the least action and emotion that would allow to provide my students with that visual. So here you can see that I'm creating two different columns to look at the uh, variations and being able to compare and contrast them if two different groups were choosing to do something different. Very simple activity. It is nothing incredibly fancy, but it is going to be an activity that your students really, really love. So when you're using this with your students, here's my recommendation. I would place students into groups of threes, um, or you could put them into pairs, or if you want to put them into larger teams, you're welcome to put them into teams. I even had it to where I had groups of students because you know how we put the desks together and you have like four or five desks together. That was a team for me. And so in some days, I just had them work with their teams around their desks to be able to do this activity. You're going to provide your students with the cards of these words. Now, guys, index cards is very, very simple. So give them something to be able to manipulate and have a discussion. So what I would do is I would have my view board up on um, the whiteboard up on my view board in the front of my classroom. And then I would talk to them about each of the words and we would read the words together. So I wanted to make sure that they had a very clear understanding of what word was, which word was which. And then I would give them their cards and then they would work as a team to be able to place them in the order. And I would set a timer on for about two to three minutes. Typically two minutes was plenty. In the very, very beginning, three minutes was going to be kind of my highest piece. And that's because I really was walking around and checking with students, asking questions, getting them to think from different perspectives, and that was really beneficial for them. And then afterwards, you're going to pull your students back together and allow teams to come up and place the words in the order that they want to place it in. Again, have them create a new column for each team so that you can compare and contrast and have a discussion around that. But very, very simple activity um, and one that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Okay, so what are your thoughts? Put them into the chat. I want to know, is this something you're absolutely going to try to do with your kids? Is this something that's simple enough that you feel like you can go back and create it. Um, and we're going to take a quick break so I can grab a drink of water. And we want to know what are some of those ViewSonic products that you have on your side of your classroom? So what are some of the things that you're using? We'll put that um, poll up for you. And I want to hear from you guys. So Mary Beth asked the question of, do you have to create multiple copies of the words? So when I would do it, I would just um, create like a printable piece and I inside of like 
PowerPoint or you can use Google Slides. I just wrote the words and then I sliced them up. Um, not fancy <laughs> at all, but it was something that I could just paper clip together and then I was able to utilize it over and over again. So I had it on my view board to build that collaborative discussion piece. And then I had those individual um, strips of paper that my students were able to manipulate within their within their groups. Yes, absolutely, Jason. Really easy to reuse for different word lists and other activities. And I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on when I'm sharing some tips for that. Don't forget to answer that poll and we're going to move right along. So the next one that I have for you is going to be paragraph punctuation. Now with paragraph punctuation, um, this one is one where it really encourages fluency. So here you can see my son is reading the passage um, and he is manipulating some of the punctuation components for that specific sentence. Um, so he's going along, reading it, finding what's supposed to go somewhere and manipulating it and moving it. And one of the biggest things here and one of the benefits that we can look at is that it helps to build fluency for our students, right? And that's a really, really key piece and something that we're starting to see quite a lot of is that our students need practice building that fluency component. And so if you're looking for some of those very simple activities that you can put into your classroom to do this as a whole group activity, this is going to be something that's very, very successful for you. It's going to create an awareness around editing in general. So um, editing and just as far as writing goes is very challenging. And it's one of the things that students never want to do. So in order to help build that editing piece and have them become more aware of where periods go, where does a comma go, this is going to be an activity that really supports it. It's going to build that discussion around punctuation, and it's going to help to develop a really big sense of just awareness in general of what fluency is and punctuation overall. So let's talk about how to create this inside of my view board. Again, it's nothing that's going to be severely challenging and difficult. It took me just a couple of minutes to get it done. So using that very bottom on the left-hand corner, you're going to click on that background piece piece again. And within that background, you're going to have some different options that you can utilize just by clicking on the view Sonic uh, icon. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you some various options that they have as far as like lines and graph papers. And so you here you can see all I did was just choose a very basic line format. Um, and this was just using the view Sonic library I, from that icon as well. From there, I had to create my, I needed to add my punctuation. So all I did was I went through the Chrome, which is on your main toolbar and within Chrome on your main toolbar, all I did was look up punctuation. <laughs> so I looked at the punctuation. If you click on it, it's going to ask you to save that onto your current canvas. So I picked one that had all of the various ones on it. So here you can see it has an exclamation mark, a question, um, you know, um, apostrophes, periods, all of the ones that I felt as though that I needed. And I made a copy of that same thing. So I just made multiple copies of however many I need. So in that one image, there were four, six pieces. So I made six copies of them. And then what I did is I went through and I just cropped it. So using the selection tool, you can tap on it and there is a crop feature, just click crop and then be able to move it using those little blue circles and have it cropped out. So this just allows me to have them all be individual pieces that the students were able to move around. Now you absolutely can just use the text feature if you wanted to. I wanted to bring in a little bit more color, a little bit more variation, but this would be something very, very easy that you can embed, okay? So I placed these at the very bottom. I was able to resize them. Again, just using um, the selection tool, you're able to resize it very easily. And then I placed it all at the bottom for my students to be able to manipulate. 
from that, we're going to create that drag to copy feature. You're going to notice that this is one of my favorite features when it comes to my view board whiteboard, because it is something that's just so easy and beneficial just as a teacher, because it means that I'm not messing up my original copy terribly. And I can just go back and delete some of those other components um, and reuse it for another class. So if you're somebody who has multiple classes that you're seeing throughout the day, it's super simple to just go through and delete where students moved those. And now you still have your feature all there, all the way at the bottom. So it's not a ton of work on your part. So um, again, all you have to do is using the selection tool, just tap on what it is that you would like to create as a drag to copy and then tap the icon. And now it is a drag to copy feature. The next thing that I ended up doing was typing a very short paragraph. Now, I, of course, am a, I'm an ELA teacher. That ELA instruction is what I'm really, really good at. But even if I was doing this in social studies or if I was doing this in science, something that you can very much build in as a warm up. And so what you could do is using a text that you've already read with your student. And that's the key here is that you want to build in some of that varied repetition that's really beneficial because it's a little bit different, but it's not different enough that it's going to require students to do a lot of brain power, a lot of brain work happening there. So I used um, Each Kindness, which is one of my favorite books that I'd like to use at the very beginning of the year. And I just took a small section from that book and I typed it up for my students to be able to read. I took out the punctuation. I did add two spaces where periods or exclamation marks or commas would end up going. It wasn't enough for my students to be able to pick up on it, um, but it was enough for them to be able to have a spot to be able to move and manipulate that punctuation for where it ends up going best. So here you could see that the best sizing that I found for um, the original background that you see here is about 40 font size. And of course, you can always adjust it if you need to adjust it just by using the selection tool and and dragging it to manipulate that sizing overall. So I showed you what it looked like once you have it adjusted. I mean, you just place it where you want it to go on the lines, but once you have it adjusted, you're ready to use it. I mean, it's that simple to be able to implement this inside of your classroom. So what you can do is you just have your students read the passage independently first. So I would like to display it on my view board. And then I have my students just sit quietly and they're supposed to read this to themselves. So whisper read it. If you have whisper phones, even better, especially for um, accommodating some of the need, various needs that we have inside of our classroom. You can go back and then I want you to read it. And I want you to slightly pause, not pause so much where you're giving them the answer, but read it as if it had the punctuation in there and really allow your students to be able to listen to where that punctuation is supposed to go. Modeling that is going to be a key piece here. And then invite your students to partner talk or have a discussion around where the punctuation is going to end up going. If you want to provide them with some of that rewriting skills, you can give them a whiteboard, have them rewrite those sentences on the whiteboard by adding those punctuations. That's also a really great way to just do a quick check on your students to make sure that they're actually getting the concept in general. Or again, you could just have it as a discussion with your kids. And then invite your learners to come up to the board and be able to share where the punctuation goes, but take it even further and ask why they think it goes there. And so really encourage them to back up their thinking as they go along. So again, that's going to be the second one um, as far as the activities that we've gotten for language. You can see how this is really going to support our students with that language development um, as we go along. And the next one that I have for you is going to be picture of the day. Um, so Jason, I really enjoyed your comment here where it says, I love how you built use the built-in screen recording tools. It is a great, great feature. And I will tell you, Jason, I used it on my view board. So I didn't do it on my computer. I was able to record that on my view board using that software. Um, and it was really nice to be able to just quickly do that. Um, and then I saved it to a, an SSD drive and was able to move that over really, really quickly. So Mary Beth says, can you save these activities as files for future years? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to share with, with you how to do that at the very end when I give you some really easy and simple tips to make sure that this lasts for you.
Okay, so the next one that we have is going to be picture of the day. And with picture of the day, uh, this is going to be an activity where you find a picture and you encourage your students to make observations around it. I will tell you that this is probably one of my students' favorites. And they were all my students' favorites. They really, really enjoyed these activities. Um, and I will say just kind of as a uh, caveat or just so that you are very aware, I had a very struggling crew of learners. Um, who needed support in many, many areas. So while I taught fourth grade, I was oftentimes making accommodations to first and second grade because of uh, the heavy learning support and the needs of the learners that I had in my classroom. So a lot of these activities are not for your just like your average, average kiddos. It's really going to help engage and excite all students, um, no matter where they are on their academic readiness. So uh, here you can see my son who is just adding in some of the words, making those observations. And now let's talk about how we can actually create it again super simple. Well, let's build and in, go into the benefits of it. So the first one is going to be that it builds vocabulary. Um, and this is a key piece because a lot of the times students are going to hear others making observations that they weren't able to make. And so having that discussion and building that um, vocabulary and discussion around the vocabulary and the things that they're observing is really, really critical. It's going to help you address various parts of speech. It's going to encourage descriptive language, which is really, really important, especially in the written component. It's going to help you build analysis. So science teachers, this is going to be a great piece for you. Uh, it's going to encourage in those listening skills, which is very, very important because as students are sharing their ideas, they need to be listening to one another. And then it's also going to help in developing that spelling, which is very critical as well. So how do we build this? Well, you're going to open up my viewer whiteboard and you are going to add an image. So I kept the background just plain white. You can, of course, add to the background if you choose to add to the background, but I kept it very, very simple. So what I did was I opened up the Chrome icon at the very bottom and then I opened up the Google search. And for this search, I just typed in, you know, kids playing at a playground, you know, free image. And so then you're able to hit free copyright is typically one of the pieces that you're able able to search. So that way, any image that you're pulling, of course, has no copyright um, pieces to it so that you're doing that completely legally. Um, and then you're going to tap on that and then hold it. And it's going to add, ask you to save that to the canvas. So it's going to pop it onto your canvas. And then from there, using that selection tool, you can just tap on it. And then you can use those dots in the corner to be able to stretch it out, however large you are wanting that. Oops. So from there, now we're going to add some headers. Now, I always like to give my students something very specific to look for when we're doing um, any form of picture of the day. So whether it's developing sentences, whether it's developing figurative language, whether it's just looking at words, whatever it might be, set a purpose for the observations that you have your students doing. So in this case, I wanted my students to look for um, various parts of speech. So for this one, I wanted them to look for nouns. I wanted them to think of adjectives and I wanted to, them to think of various verbs of things that they could do at this playground. And so all you do is just add your text feature from the main toolbar. You're going to type in your text. You can adjust the font, you can adjust the size. And then I just used the copy and paste. So for the copy, using that selection tool, just tap on it hit the copy uh, icon. And then in the floating toolbar, the one that you can move around your My View Board whiteboard, you're gonna just hit the paste there and that's gonna allow you to paste it. So here you can see that I'm just doing a little bit of resizing. And then what I did is I went on ahead and I adjusted it. I wanted it to be where my students were able to write vertically. So I, using that hand tool, which is your infinite canvas, I was able to reduce the size or uh, of my image and be able to expand my canvas even more. And I then just took my headers and I moved them to the top. Um, using that line tool again, which is 
really your shape tool, which is going to be on the main toolbar. And then if you look at that pop-up window, you're going to have your shapes, your lines, your table, click on the line, just draw your lines. You can copy and paste it, or you can just draw new lines every time, whatever fits best for you. And you can even see mine are not totally perfect as well, which kind of bothers me. <laughs> So once you do that, then you're able to use it inside of your classroom. It's as simple as that. It's an image with some lines and some words. And so here's what I would recommend to you. Show this, your students the image. And I would zoom into my image to where it was taking up my entire canvas on my view board for my students. Give them some time to make an observation. And so I had a timer and I would set a timer for one minute, two minutes, whatever it might be. One minute is typically enough for them to just make observations. Give them a whiteboard if they have to write things down to be able to kind of hold that in their heads. After that time, allow your students to have a discussion about what are some of the things that they notice within that image. And so after that, you can allow them to come up with the nouns, the adjectives, the verbs, and then just pull them together and have them share out some of those words that they were able to come up with. So you're going to see that they come up with so many different types. They're going to be very, very creative and have a discussion about whether it does fit for this image and whether it doesn't fit for the image. So those are going to be some really great opportunities, but again, something that you can utilize in content, whether you're analyzing various animals or habitats, um, and then you can even do a compare and contrast. You can show one image, do a second image, and then have a comparing and contrasting of those two images and what they see are similar and different. So there's a lot of different possibilities here, but something that is very simple for you to do, and it's going to be highly engaging to your students as well. Okay, let's take another break. Um, at this point, we want to know what are some tools that you'd like to learn more about. So, what are some things that we're gonna um, we're gonna add in that little poll here, and you can select from some of those. And I'm gonna grab a drink of water. So, what are some of those tools that you'd like to learn more about? Shapes, erasers, pens, infinite canvas, or the magic box? Thank you for those of you who are participating. I really appreciate that. Okay, so the next one that we're going to talk about is a word matrix. Now, word matrix is something new that I started last year. Um, I started at the very, very beginning of the school year, and it was because it was something that I felt as though my students needed um, tremendously in order to help them, one, develop fluency, really look at each of the parts of words and help develop an understanding about words just in general. So here you can see my son is on my view board. And what it is, is it's a table of various affixes and base words that they are able to manipulate to develop as many words as possible. What's great about this is that you can have conversations about what words make sense and what words don't make sense. And so students, oftentimes when I was doing this in my classroom, they would try to come up with the most words possible and they would have a, a competition on who could develop the most words that were actual real words um, using the word matrix from that week. So let's talk about some of the benefits of a word matrix. One, it's going to help students be able to identify those base words and their affixes. It's really going to help them to encourage to break words apart when reading. Um, the more we help our students see that words are made up of different various parts, whether it's affixes and base words, the more fluent our readers are going to be and the more that they're able to then make those observations into their own reading, which is critical and we need them to do that. It's going to help to develop that fluency component that we need to see from them. Um, it's going to develop a lot of vocabulary. Uh, oftentimes I will, uh, I was doing these activities and my students who were on, you know, a first grade reading level and I'm teaching fourth grade, those students were looking at me saying, I can read a big word. <laughs> and, and it was like, yeah, once we're able to break those down, you know, it really does help to develop that fluency. And they were able to very quickly read those words for me. 
It's going to help them develop that uh, vocabulary, discuss connotation. You know, is it a negative word, a positive word? And what is it that make, what are the changes that happens to our base words to make our connotation change? Um, and of course, it's going to build some of that collaboration, which is going to be a, a constant piece in all of the activities that you're going to see here in this webinar. So how do we make this? Um, it's actually very, very simple. Um, so what you have to do is one, you're going to have to decide on your matrix. Now I can assure you, I did not come up with all of these. <laughs> so all I did was go to Google and I typed word matrix and so many various types are going to pop up. And I just took those ideas and then started to create them on my own and made some slight adjustments based off of the needs and the academic readiness, of course, of my students. So using the shape tool, um, I kept the background white, but using that shape tool, I was able to create a rectangle. And again, I adjusted the outline. I adjusted the fill bucket with using a really pretty gray. Again, it's just calming. It's very neutral, keeps it simple. And I feel like it doesn't completely take over um, the, the, the learning that's supposed to happen for our kids. So once you have that, you're going to copy and paste. So use the selection tool, tap on your rectangle once you have it adjusted, and then you're going to paste it from the floating bar. And so once you have that one pasted, adjust it where you need to adjust it and make the, the remainder of your rectangles wherever you need them to be. So what you're going to notice is that as I start to make this, your prefixes are going to go in the front and you're going to have a base word, which is going to be bolded. And then your, your suffixes are going to go at the very end. And so what students are doing is they're looking at the combinations based off of where all of these um, parts are located. Oops. Uh, the next part is to lock your shapes in place. Guys, this is really, really important. You need to lock those shapes in place. So by doing this, what it does is it prevents students from accidentally deleting, moving, whatever it might be, because that's probably one of the most frustrating parts is when you have them go up and start manipulating things. And then all of a sudden, the great work that you've done is just in chaos because students are moving all the things around. So all you have to do is use the selection tool, tap on your box, and then you're going to have a menu that pops up. In that menu, there is a lock. Click on that lock and it's going to show it on the corner of that rectangle that it is locked and you cannot move it. To unlock it, all you have to do is hit that little lock, unlock button in that corner and it'll unlock the shape for you. So make sure that you repeat the step on all of your boxes um, just to make sure that they all stay in one spot. The next part is going to be the add your affixes and your base words. And so again, using that text um, feature, you're going to just add one. So here I added the, the prefix re, um, adjust your font, adjust your sizing here, and then you're going to copy and paste it. So once you copy and paste it, you can then change it. Now, notice that for the base word, I made it in bold, and that's going to be really important. Anytime you have a base word, whether even the base word is with the prefixes, because sometimes we can develop compound words, um, keep all of your base words in bold. So that way students are aware that that is a base word. And then you're just going to go in and just change all the remainder of them so that you have your board completely made out. Once you do that, again, my favorite feature in this entire board is the drag to copy. So you are going to uh, create your drag to copy for each part of uh, your word matrix. And the reason I love this is because it's going to allow you to create a huge list of all the words on the side. And that's going to be really important, especially if you're working on developing that fluency piece, because once we were done building those words together, we would read them. We would go up, we would read them. I would have students come up and they would individually read those words to, to us. And it was just a great way to be able to see all of the words we're able to build 
result just from this one um, or the few affixes and base words that we have on the word matrix. So create this for each one. You're going to have to tap on every single text box that you've created to add that drag to copy icon to it. And now you're able to just um, allow your students to manipulate it and move it over. And again, going back that if you have multiple classes and you want to reuse this one slide, all you have to do is now just go and delete the work that they've done on the side because you already have still have your board intact. And so now there's not much work that you have to do in reshuffling and rebuilding your board and making sure that it goes back the way that it needs to. So how do we use this with students? So here's what I would do. Um, I would just have my students um, go through and I'm going to kind of point to this here. I, I would have them go through on a whiteboard and they would quietly um, try to build as many words as possible. And so again, they're working to just kind of build those. And so I would have students come up one at a time and manipulate those words. Um, oftentimes I would give them their whiteboards and they would have to uh, keep track of how many words they created. They would have to cross off the words that were not actual words. Um, and then they would create a number of how many they were able to come up with overall. And so some of them were trying to do like PRs, like I'm trying to hit like a personal record here of getting like 20 words, or some kids were trying to get up to like 30. Some kids just wanted to beat everybody else and get the most words possible. So it was always a really competitive piece, but the kids really enjoyed it. So I had the whiteboards in their laps that they were able to use. I would just show this to them. Um, and again, just kind of looking at where my son was doing it. And then they would just come up and they would manipulate it and build every single one of those words. So it was very simple. Um, I did really like the fact that I had the whiteboard component there because that whiteboard feature just allowed them to write it down, um, which I thought was a really a critical piece. So if you don't have whiteboards, because I know that they can tend to be a little bit costly, you could do like sleeves, you can do like laminated sheets of paper, whatever it might be, but provide your students opportunity in that time and space to just be able to write those words down um, before they come up and they start looking at how to combine them. In the beginning, you will need to walk them through this because they will not um, understand it. And you can see here that my son, he doesn't have a ton of experience with it. So he doesn't really want to hit any of the prefixes. So we had to like help guide him and focusing on those prefixes. So it's going to be something that's going to take time, but the more you do it, and I would recommend doing it at least once a week, the more you're going to see your students have a, a deeper understanding of just how words are built in general. Okay. So now we are going to do the final one. And before we do that, I think we have one more poll. Am I correct? I think so. Um, and so this one is, how do you plan to use my viewport in your class? And we, we would love to know. Let me know so far in the chat too, if um, you're loving any of the ideas, if you're going to take some of these back and put them into your classroom, I'd love to know. So what are some, how do you plan on using my viewport inside of your class? I can thank you to those of you who are participating, who are coming in, sharing your thoughts, um, answering those polls. We sincerely appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to go into the final piece. The final one is going to be sentence syntax. And so for this one, which I really love, it's getting your students to manipulate words to create a cohesive sentence. <laughs> and it's going to be one that's really, really challenging. And I'm going to offer some ideas for accommodations um, and some variations that you could do with your students, especially if you're working with the younger crews that are really going to struggle with this. So here's how this one works. Basically, you have a group of words where students are um, working to manipulate them and put them into a sentence. And so some of the benefits that we get with this is that it's going to help one develop that understanding of parts of speech, which is something that we need to improve on. It's going to develop this awareness of sentence structure. Where do the verbs go? Where does the subjects go? Where do the objects go? It's going to improve that oral communication with your students. It's going to improve written communication with your students and just developing sentences overall. And it's going to help encourage usage of more complex sentences, because oftentimes our students are wanting to give us very just to the point 
the dog ran. I came over. We love to play. And so we want them to use more variation into their sentences and their writing. And this is really going to help benefit them in this piece. So to do this, here is um, what I've done is I would just open up my view board. And again, using that um, background corner icon, I would just go into the ViewSonic's original content. And then I would then just look for any form of lines. And so I found this one. I really loved the yellow. I thought it just kind of popped. And I, I, I liked that it had the lines where you can actually handwrite it. If you wanted students to practice some of that handwriting on your, on your view board, that was um, just a great feature to me. So choose your background. You definitely don't have to use my background, but choose some form of a background. It can be with lines. It doesn't have to be whatever is up to you. From there, you're going to create your boxes. Now, this is very similar to when we I showed you the shades of meaning activity. And so for your boxes, um, they're not going to be as long, but you're going to use that shape tool to drop, draw a rectangle, change the fill, change the outline. You can have it match. It doesn't have to match. It's up to you. But then you're going to add your text. So again, adding with the text box, text icon on the main toolbar, you're going to click that on, and then you're going to change whatever you want it to be. So here's how I did this. Again, using a sentence from a book that we've already read. So this was each kindness. Once again, I just took a sentence that I wanted them to manipulate and I put it up. So they were already kind of familiar with the story. I told them where it was coming from. So that way they have some idea of, okay, this is supposed to be all about from the book, each kindness. It's going to help give that varied uh, instruction, which is what we need to provide our kids. So you're going to take your, uh, your shape and your text box, and then you're going to group them. So using that text feature, you're going to group it together so that it stays together all in um, one collection. So from there, you're going to duplicate and change the colors of your text. So um, you have your sentence in front of you. And again, I recommend using some form of a mentor sentence or something that you guys have been reading as a class. This is a great warm up to do with your students. And now you're just going to make multiple copies. So I counted out how many uh, words were in that sentence. I did include punctuation and, or I kept the punctuation separate. So I had a separate one for a comma, a separate one for a period, and I just had to go through and change it. So because you group it, you need to ungroup it. So using your selection tool, you're going to tap on it and then it's going to, you're going to hit the ungroup button or the group button. It's going to ungroup it. You can then change your background of your, um, your rectangle, and then you can change the shape or your, your words for your text. And then you're going to have to group it back together. Once you do it one or two times, it gets super, super quick. And then you don't really think about it. You're just like, boom, I got it done because it's this huge pattern that you're following. So here you can see I changed um, my words. I had to adjust on some of my shapes to make them a little bit longer based off of the word that I was using, but I tried to keep it around the size of the text that I had, um, and, and I just kind of did that for all of them. So you're going to repeat it for all of your boxes until you have all of your sentence ready to go. From there, all you have to do is just move your sent your words down. Now, I'm not using the drag to copy feature, although you probably could use the drag to copy feature in this and it would be fantastic. Um, I chose not to do it because I feel like you, I would be too predictable. So maybe I'm trying to change it up just a little bit here for you guys. So all I did was uh, moved them back down to the screen. So because I was doing this on on the view board and not through my computer, um, I did have to move the text up so that when I was typing on it, um, it, I could see what I was typing. And so now I'm moving them all the way back down and I'm placing them in different spots so that my students can have a conversation about them. So let's talk a little bit about how to do this with your students inside of your class. So again, depending on the academic readiness of your students and determining just like the levels of support that you need to provide with them, you can either one, do it the way that I just showed you here, where it is all scrambled up and encourage them to think about certain things with, for instance, 
what, how would we know which word goes first? Well, it should have a capital letter. So, oh, the word in is going to have that capital uh, letter at the very beginning. So that must be the start. If you wanted to keep the punctuation with the words, that would also be beneficial because then you would have a starting word and an ending word, and then you would need to fill it in. If that is too challenging, then all you have to do is uh, put some of the words where you want them to go and then leave some blank and encourage your students to fill them in from there and then just have a discussion about them. So you could even give your students index cards, put them into groups and be able to manipulate it just like shades of meaning and then pull them back together and have a conversation about them. Um, but all of this is going to be something that um, that you could either do you know, as an entire class or have them work on it collaboratively. So Mary Beth asks, are you doing this all by touch or are you also using a keyboard to enter text? So on my, when I was building this using my view board, I was doing it all on touch. A keyboard pops up for you um, and I'm able to then just type it in on the large view board. Um, you can just do this on your computer if you wanted to do it on your computer. I actually did it for both. I've done it both ways. Um, before this one, because I was recording, I decided to record it on my view board itself. So a keyboard will pop up for you. Okay. So those are going to be your five activities. Okay. Let's talk about some tips for leveraging my view board and making this as easy as possible. So the first one, Mary Beth, going back to what you were talking about um, earlier, is I would make a duplicate of your slides for as an original. Um, you just never know with kids. You really just don't. So here is what I would recommend to you is um, using the floating toolbar. You can see your slides and it's going to have a number on there for you. And so what I would recommend doing is clicking on the, your slides and then there's a little icon that you can just duplicate. So here you can see that I duplicated it. And so now I have two different uh, versions of the same one. That way I keep an original and then I have one that if my students mess up, I'm not too stressed about it because I still have an original on there. So have some form of original and make a copy of that of that slide. The next thing that I would recommend is to save it to your Google Drive. I used all of them on my Google Drive. They're all saved there. And so what I did was I just went to the floppy disk icon. It's the floppy disk with the pen to so the save. And then I would save it onto my Google Drive. It will create a folder for me and I will house all of my um, files there. And it's going to save it as a .org. And so that's going to be um, the software that it needs to fit for my Viewboard whiteboard and for it to actually work the way you want it to work. So make sure that it's saving as a dot org. Um, and so then I can open it up from Google Drive, which is really nice. So if you have it attached to it, it just it makes it very, very easy. I can go to any my view board that's inside of my school, open up my resources using my Google Drive and be able to share them there. So I will often save them as many times as possible to ensure that all of my slides are exactly where they need to be. And then finally, the biggest thing here is going to be that, um, you know, something is better than nothing. So there is really no wrong way to do some of the things that I've been showing you. These were just the way that I've done them in the past. It was something that I used in my classroom, but you know, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want it to be, but I can ensure you that the learning experience is still going to be the same and your students are going to be highly engaged and excited to be able to come back and do this activity over and over again. If my students last year were looking at me saying, Ms. Backman, can we please do that game again. Can we please do a, a, another like uh, shades of meaning activity? That says a lot. So I promise you they will love these activities. It's something you could do as a quick warm up every single day, and you can encourage those language skills that we really need to work in developing with our students. Okay, so let's talk giveaways because I know that's uh, that's where we're all at right now at this point, right? So the first one is going to be um, you can do a $25 uh, gift card that's going to be in the community. So if you head over to the community and you join, which by the way, if you you'll have to go on the left hand side, it's going to be US and Canada forum. When you go to that forum, you need to hit join. There's going to be a join button. Hit join. That's going to allow you to comment. Okay, very very important. Leave 
feedback on that post that you see here. So that I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Were they something that you're going to implement into the classroom? Any form of feedback, I would really, really appreciate it. Please go leave it there. You have a chance to win $25. Okay. So let's talk uh, the $100 one. Okay. So really quick, here's what I need from you. Um, I need you to put your name in the chat if you want to be in this giveaway. Okay. I, you need to put your name in the chat. Okay. Chris, I got you. Mary Beth, I got you. Jason, I got you. Shirley. Okay. Hi guys. All right, I'm getting you into my wheel of uh, winners. And here we go. If I spell it wrong, I do apologize. I'm trying to type it so fast. Okay, so I have you guys in there. I am going to spin you. Do you guys trust me if I spin it and I will just put a name out? Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I promise you I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fudge here. So I'm gonna click it to spin. Here's my winner. Drum roll, please. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Rebecca Pitts, you are the winner. Congratulations. Um, somebody from ViewSonic is going to reach out to you um, so that you can you can get it. Congratulations. Very, very exciting. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. That was it for my presentation today, but I have another one and I'm really, really excited about the other one. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you're going to join me um, for August 1st. It's going to be August 1st, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to do quick review games. So if you are somebody who loves games as much as I do, please join. We're going to do another incentive that if you join, you can get something. Please put it into your calendars. I promise you, you're going to love it. If you love games, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> um, and of course, I would love for you to connect with me in any way possible. So online, I'm known as Bridget Speckman, the Lettered Classroom, also under Bridging Literacy, which is going to be um, how I support teachers online on the internet. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I, I sincerely appreciate the time that you've been able to give me. I know it's very valuable, um, but hopefully you were able to take away something really uh, easy that you can put into your classroom. Awesome. Awesome. Bridget, thank you so much for joining us and giving us a very powerful webinar today. And just a quick PSA. Um, so for our winner, Rebecca Pitts, um, please chat me your email. Uh, an awesome Amazon gift card is heading your way. Excellent. I just got it. Thank you. Awesome. So um, and, and then everyone that just joined us, remember, there's a second chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card just join our community. It just takes one simple action and just putting a comment. If you love what you heard today, feel free to share that with Bridget. It's going to mean a great deal uh, so that we can essentially do more of these. And so it does take community to build community. So we're excited. This is the group that essentially moves the needle forward to help our kids bridge any kind of learning gaps or even bridge even digital divides, what have you. So again, very excited. And to what Bridget mentioned, please tune in. Um, you'll see postings on our social and you'll see them as well in our community platform um, to get the latest updates. I want to thank everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. We'll catch you in the next one.